Congratulations on your decision to make Deck Tools, the industry's leading design and sales software, part of your business. The goal of this video is to give you a brief overview of the Deck Tools components that will help you get started using the software. Look for other targeted presentations at the Deck Tools training video section of the Customer Support Forum. Please feel free to follow along at your own pace with the Deck Tools application. You can pause or rewind this video at any time using the control panels at the bottom of this window. The first thing people notice after Deck Tools is launched is the group of four design views. The views represent the top or plan view, a right elevation, a front elevation, and a realistic three-dimensional perspective view. The design views are just different viewpoints of the same design. That means when you draw a deck level in the top view, the level can be seen in all of the other views at the same time. Each design view can be thought of as a big piece of virtual grid paper. You can click down with the primary mouse button in the design view and drag the paper around interactively. You can zoom in and out to get closer or farther away from your design using the scroll wheel on your mouse. The 3D view behaves a little differently than the rest. Unlike a two-dimensional piece of paper, the 3D view is a real-time, three-dimensional visualization of your design with realistic perspective. When you click down with the primary mouse button in the 3D view and drag the mouse around, you orbit around your design in all directions. You can also maximize any of the views by clicking on the Maximize button in the corner of the desired view. Returning to all four views is as simple as clicking that button again. The program's user interface and menus are set up in a logical order of use, which is especially helpful for new users. For example, the Design Tool menu contains features for adding to a design. The next menu, called Details, is used to modify details or builder settings for items already in the design. The background menu can be used at any time to completely draw your customers in. And when you are ready, you can generate a full color proposal or bill of materials by clicking on the reports menu. Now let's get started with a new deck project. Drawing is easy with deck tools. Start in the top view and click on the maximize button in the corner. The top view expands to cover the entire drawing area. Create more drawing space by scrolling the mouse wheel towards you. First, let's draw our wall or house where the deck will be located. You do this by clicking on the Design Tool menu. Scroll down to Existing Structure and select Draw Wall. Click down and release the primary mouse button to create a start point for your wall. As you pull away from that starting point, you will notice a green line attached to the cursor with dimension lines. Click down again to add an additional segment to the wall. Continue to click down to add any additional jogs, bays, or other features to the wall. To exit the draw wall mode, simply press the escape key. The house wall has a distinct outside and inside, with the outside displaying a finish and the inside is translucent. For that reason, draw the wall from left to right near the top of the view. The deck will be drawn below and properly illuminated from the light source. With the translucent inside, move the 3D view inside the house to view the deck from that vantage point. Now we'll add a deck level. Go to the Design Tool menu and click on Add Deck Level and then select Draw Custom Deck Level. Simply click down in the top view with the left mouse button and release. Just like the Draw Wall tool, this will create a starting point for your deck. As you pull the mouse cursor away from that starting point, you will see a segment with dimension lines. You add an additional segment simply by clicking down on the primary mouse button. Multiple segments are connected together to create the shape of the deck level. You can draw out every bay or cut now or simply add or adjust them later. Click down on the start point again to automatically generate all of the objects associated with the substructure of the deck level. 
I'll minimize this view for a second to show you how easy the 3D representation of the design is to use. In fact, it is always there. Even though it's faster to draw a shape in a plan view, the design is already in 3D as I draw or change it in the top view. No extra steps or conversion required to view your project in 3D. To add an additional level or landing to this deck, we would repeat the same steps. There is no practical limit on the number of deck levels or landings you can put into the same design. Once you have a deck level in your design, you can modify its shape by choosing the Select Modify Shape tool on the Design Tool menu. This will allow you to easily select points or segments on the perimeter of the deck that you want to modify. If the deck level is not already selected, click anywhere on the deck to highlight the perimeter. The first time that you click on the edge of a deck, the segment that you click on will be highlighted in yellow. If you click and hold on the same segment a second time, you will notice the segment turns green and it becomes interactively positioned until you let go of the mouse. You can select any segment on the shape of a deck and interactively move it. You can also select multiples and move them as a group. For more precise modifications, use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now it's time to add doors and windows to your drawing. Go to the Design Tools menu and select Custom Objects, From Deck Tools, Doors. Select a door from the options Deck Tools users have already created for you to use in your drawing. The door will appear near the center of the drawing field. To position the door, go to the Design Tools menu, select Modify Parts. The cursor will change to a new icon which notifies you that you are in the Select Modify Parts mode before you are in Select Modify Shapes mode. Click on the door to select it. The door will turn yellow to signal it is selected. Hold down on the primary mouse button until the color of the door changes from yellow to green and move the mouse to the proper location. Use the arrow keys to make finer adjustments. To get the most out of using the arrow keys, remember that using an arrow key on its own moves the selected level, object, line segment, or point one inch each time you press the key. Holding the shift key and using the arrow keys will move the part one foot at a time. Holding the alt key and pressing the arrow keys will move the part one eighth of an inch each time the arrow key is pressed. The nudge distance using the Alt key can be adjusted in the Design View group of the Settings tab in the Info tabs. It can be set to any increment you choose. Follow the same steps to add a window. Go to Custom Objects, From Deck Tools, Windows, and choose a window that a Deck Tools user has already produced. Once the window is in place in the design, it can be copied and pasted and located in other parts of the house wall as necessary. The Custom Objects menu contains additional objects for you to add to your design. You'll find pergolas, benches, planters, and fences. The best part is that the program allows you to add your own creations to the Custom Objects menu. You can do this easily by saving them in a folder located in my Documents, Deck Tools Data, Custom Objects if you have Windows XP, or if you have Windows Vista, the folder is located in your Documents, Deck Tools Data, Custom Objects. After you save an object in this folder, a new submenu option is created in Custom Objects called User Defined. Going forward, each object you create and save in your Custom Objects folder will appear in the user defined submenu option. Also in the design tools menu directly below custom objects is an accessories option. Here you'll find neat accessories to add to your design. As you can see, Deck Tools provides users with typical accessories your clients might have in their backyard, such as patio furniture and stainless grills. To add an accessory to your design, first select the deck level and then follow the same steps we used before to add custom objects. Click on the Design Tools menu and select Accessories. 
Now choose an accessory from the list and add it to your design. You can select the object and position it where you'd like it to fit in your design using your arrow keys. Rotating the object is simple. With the accessory selected, hold down the R key and then hold the mouse button down. Now slide the mouse from one side to the other to rotate the item. Look on the bottom of the screen at the status bar to see the angle of rotation. Add stairs to the deck by clicking the deck with the select shape cursor. Then select on the side to add the stairs. Now the edge with the highlight represents a line segment that the stairs will attach. When a shorter line segment to add stairs is needed, simply add endpoints. With the deck edge selected, place the cursor over the line that represents one side of the stairs and press the plus key on the keyboard. Your new point will be added immediately. If the stairs are coming off the deck corner, there is no need to add a point at the corner because the corner already represents a point. Go to the Design Tools menu and select the Selected Segments option and then Add or Remove Stairs. The staircase automatically generates and runs down until it hits another deck level, landing, or the ground. As the name suggests, you can also turn off the stairs with this command. Avoid using the delete key to remove stairs or stair parts. To add railing, first select a deck level and then click on an edge of the deck that needs railing. Next, hold down the control key and select all the other edges that require railing. Holding the control key allows you to select multiple points, edges, or objects. Now go to the Details menu and select Railings option. Click on the Select Railing Style from Deck Tools and select a railing style from one of the Deck Tools library partners. With the deck edges still selected, it is easy to view alternative railing options sitting at a customer's kitchen table. Using the Rail Designer, you can create your own unique Rail styles. Styles can be created either from scratch or by editing existing styles. Once you have created a railing style, it can be saved and used over and over again in future Deck Tools drawings. Click the Save Railing Style button in the Railing Designer tab to save a railing style. Be sure to save it to your My Documents, Deck Tools Data, Railing Styles folder if you have Windows XP, or Documents, Deck Tools Data, Railing Styles if you have Windows Vista. That way Deck Tools can find the style and it will automatically appear in the Details, Railings, Select Railing Style, User Defined submenu. The User Defined will then be populated with your new railing styles. Watch the Railing Designer videos in the Customer Support Forum in the Deck Tools training video topic for more information. Now that we've got the basics down and have our deck designed, it's time to customize the details that will really impress your customers and help you close the sale. As you've probably guessed already, we will use the Details menu. Deck Tools follows the same process for adjusting the details of almost every component. Once you know how to adjust one detail, you pretty much know how to control them all. You can change the finish, height, and thickness of a wall using the Details Wall menu. Click on the Details menu and scroll down to the Wall component and hover over the Finish menu. Here you will find a list of finishes that can be immediately applied to the wall. Select Bricks or Stack Stone, for example, and that texture or finish will be applied to the wall in three dimensions. The Mitered Bordered submenu allows you to quickly add a picture frame to your deck. Click on the Mitered Bordered submenu and select a pattern that is one, two, or three boards deep, and the decking is regenerated with the boards used for the border added automatically. You can also control its finish and board size independent of the rest of the decking. Use the Modify Single Part option on the Design Tool menu to select individual decking boards and control their finish. For example, 
Select the middle board on a three board deep mitered border all the way around the deck using the control click. Then go to details, mitered border, to select the new color for that board. This results in a custom color inlay in the middle of the mitered border. By default, your decking has no fascia. To add fascia to an entire deck level, select the deck using the Select Modify Shape tool. Then choose a deck board in the Details, Fascia, Part menu. To add fascia to only certain segments of a deck level, select the deck using the Select Modify Shape tool. Then click again on a segment you'd like to change. Control click if you would like to act on more segments. Then choose Details, Fascia, Add or Remove Fascia. To add fascia to all deck levels in a design, make sure nothing in the design is selected, and then choose a deck board in the Details, Fascia, Part menu. To control the details of a railing, click on the segment the railing is attached to. Click on the Details menu, then select the Railings component to see the custom railing designer. This takes railing design to a whole new level. You can mix and match any custom parts and pieces from any of our 3D Materials Library partners and set up your own railing section. For example, you can lay out decorators or fortress pickets and accessories with TimberTech or Correct Deck railings. Then simply name that custom railing style and apply it to any part of your design with the click of a mouse. To see the substructure of your deck level, you can click on the View menu, scroll down to Visible Layers submenu, and toggle Decking On or Off. To control the details that are used for each of the components in the deck level, simply click on the Details menu. When you build or move a deck level next to a wall, the deck level segment attached to the wall is automatically recognized as a ledger. Joist hangers are automatically placed only at the end of a joist meeting with a ledger or box beam. Joist objects thus know on each end if they are connecting to a ledger or a rim joist. Select details, joists, or beams to adjust the spacing, amount of cantilever for the joists to overhang the beams, or beams to overhang the posts. You can also adjust the size of the lumber used for joists or beams and the structural connectors to use. If you select a single beam using the Select Modify Parts tool, you can change the size, style, cantilever, or structural connectors for just that beam, but not the spacing or height. If you select a single joist using the Select Modify Parts tool, you can change which structural connectors are used on that single joist, but none of the other details. Change the details on a post just as easily. Select the post and click on the Details menu. Scroll down to the post component and adjust the spacing or the size of the lumber that is being used for that particular post, as well as the structural connectors. You can also interactively move or delete any post while it remains attached to the beam. You can insert a new post anywhere on the deck and have it attached to the joist frame or pass through to use as a railing post or part of the structure for an object above the deck level. You can also design your own footings by selecting Details, Posts and Footings, Footing Details. This brings up a single post and footing in the Design View panes, plus a new Footings Details tab in the Info Tabs pane where you can customize the settings for the new footing, including the pier. Click Apply Changes to Selected Posts or Cancel to return to the regular Design View. You can use the Quick Stack Control on the main toolbar for a live readout of total square footage, total railing linear footage, or a real-time estimate of labor and materials while the design is still being changed. Add your own touch with custom parts. 
Create planters, pergolas, benches, and much more to enhance your design and then save them to use again and again in the future. The custom part detail is found in the info tabs. Any part from the materials library can be added to a drawing and then manipulated by size and orientation. Also, with the part selected, go to the details menu and click on set category to ensure the parts are properly identified in the bill of materials. Once the part is added to the drawing, it can be copied and pasted to speed up creating your custom object. All the parts added can be grouped for easy selection and movement. See the custom parts video for a detailed demonstration using custom parts and creating custom objects to repeatedly use. Generate a multi-page proposal including full color renderings of the current design. This option launches Microsoft Word and opens the Deck Tools proposal template. Deck Tools automatically fills in the cover sheet with the customer information, a preview image in full color, as well as your company's information on the bottom of the page. You can edit this template at any point before or after the report is generated to include your own company logo automatically. The second page of the proposal includes a line drawing of the top view and front view and a full color 3D rendering in a larger format. The last page of the proposal is the one page estimate. Be sure to add your personal information in the settings tab before you export your proposal and all your information will appear in place. When you are finished, be sure to save your proposal. To generate a bill of materials or takeoff of the current design, select four builders and then select the desired type of report by part by use or linear feet. This will automatically launch Microsoft Excel and open the Deck Tools Bill of Materials template. Deck Tools automatically fills in the project information and a line item for every part pulled in the design. These line items include the part name, dimensions, finish, and the part number or SKU you entered for the parts supplier. All of the reports generated in Excel are live spreadsheets. You are free to modify the report just like you would any other Microsoft Excel document. This means you can adjust any value and the rest of the spreadsheet will instantly recalculate. You can adjust waste on each and every part and the bottom line is updated as fast as you hit the Enter key. The accuracy of the Bill of Materials report is dependent on the information you put in the report. In summary, this function is a huge time saver for users while accurately quoting material. Purchase orders are the same as bills of materials, except they include an account number line at the bottom of your company contact information, a supplier or dealer box for the supplier dealer's contact information, and a ship to box for the delivery address. You can generate purchase orders by part or linear foot. While you are in any of the four design views, the program allows you the option to export the image into additional file formats. To export an image to a new file format, go to the File menu and scroll down to Export Image File. You have five options to choose from. The first is Web Email Quality. This will export the image to a JPEG file. You can choose between Small, Large, and Maximum. The next option is Print Quality. This will export the image to a portable network graphics file type. The third option is 360 degree animated frames. Deck Tools will save your image as a video clip. You are given the option to choose the amount of frames you would like in the 360 degree animation. And the fourth option is AutoCAD DWG. This will export the image to a DWG drawing format, which is probably the most widely used format for CAD drawings. And the fifth option is AutoCAD DXF. This will export the image to a DXF file format, which is also used for enabling CAD data exchange between AutoCAD and other programs. 
Much of the work you have done in Deck Tools appears based on defaults you can set and change as needed by your design. The default settings include things like joist spacing, riser style, and pricing. The Setup Assistant is an easy way to get started in setting your defaults in the beginning and is located in the Help menu whenever you need it. The Assistant is divided into four sections. Company Information, Materials and Parts, Pricing and Estimating, and Design Defaults. Click on the button for a section you need to edit and then follow the on-screen instructions that guide you through the section. Press the close button when you are finished editing the sections. Training and customer support are very important and for that reason, with every license purchase, we offer free one-on-one -on -one web-based training, customers only support forum, live phone support, online training sessions and videos for self-paced learning. We are here to help you succeed with Deck Tools and we want to see your business grow. Use this video to get a quick start with Deck Tools and view it as often as you like to refresh your memory. Also view other videos that highlight very specific functions at the Deck Tools Training Videos section of the Customer Support Forum. Thank you for choosing Deck Tools for your design and sales solution. And thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful.